Hey, this is John. If you're looking at this video, that means you're probably interested in buying my 2014 Dodge ProMaster 2500. Let's take a quick little tour around this vehicle. Underneath this license plate, this is where we have the connection for shore power. The van itself has lights all around it, uh, all around the very top and 700 watts of solar. It's very important to put good tires on here. And one of the things that we did was by putting a four inch lift kit, we were able to put bigger tires than stock onto this vehicle. So we have a four inch lift, both front and rear on this vehicle. There is a towing hitch at the back of the vehicle, um, as well as we have a bunch of stickers that just say this vehicle is monitored with audio and video because we have an extra camera both in the front and in the rear that are recording 24 seven. Uh, this is the front light, this is the rear light, this is the left, this is the right. So on the front of the vehicle, Clearly that light bar is doing its thing. Around the side, we have three lights on this side. We have two lights on the rear, and then we have three more lights on this side. And so everything is um, controllable by side was that we want the bed to be removable and the bed is removable with four bolts. Right over here, this is kind of our main control. And so we have four 12 volt outlets. We have one 20 volt right here up to 3000 watts. I have run circular saws, I've run angle grinders, I've run so much stuff off of this electrical system. It is fabulous. Then right here, um, this is where we fill up with water. And then uh, right here is the hookup that we have to take a shower and then also uh, to fill up our bicycle tires or to fill up the tires um, in the van. And when you do so, right down here is the air chuck um, that you can hook up so that way you can fill up the front uh, tires as well. If you need to take a shower, then right up here we have the uh, connection to be able to take, uh, you just hang the shower right there. And then we normally run a curtain um, from here to here. And then we have a teak board that we put down so that way you can take your shower, do your thing, and then hop right up in the bed, which is really nice. Um, we're gonna be taking these covers off in a little bit um, to show you what the inside looks like. But right now, like I said, the bed can be removed. And then normally like skis or snowboards can be stored um, from there to there or recovery tracks, uh, whatever makes the most sense. We have a connection right here so we can put a table. Um, so if we wanna have an outside um, buffet, we can do that with a table. Right over here, we have storage for our shoes. And the reason you can see the floor the way that you can is because I needed it to be deep enough that it both matched here on height so that way you aren't stubbing your toe, but also you could put ski boots, you can put snowboard boots, um, and the width of the boot laying down sideways is good to go. So this area right here, um, you can have your ski and snowboard boots and everything is good to go. What you would have seen on the still photos is that these chairs uh, are able to swivel. Both this seat and that seat are swivel. This right here is the heater and the heater is phenomenal. What it does is it siphons gas from the gas tank, burns it in an inside chamber and then exhaust the gas out. There's no gas inside the actual cabin. It's all contained. If you are connected to shore power, then this right here is a direct connection to shore power. And so then that way you don't have to run through the power of the inverter. You don't have to run through um, the, the battery or anything. The swivel chair is the only real addition to the front of the vehicle. So this chair here can swivel around and then this chair here can also swivel around and then you can make it as comfortable as you want to make it. Um, I basically just press this button right here and then I say that I want it to open. So this is air in. If I want, I can change it to air out. What I normally will do is I'll cover the front of it so that way the infrared transmitter doesn't transmit. I change this to air out, I close. Then I come over here and there we are. Now we have air out on this one here. And so what we have going on is that now I have air coming in and air going out. And so whenever everything is closed up, that creates a really good circulation. And then if you want, you can obviously replace it uh, the other direction. This sink right here, uh, you're able to use with any amount of water. We'll go through the setup of how we get the water up and running and going. This right here, this cutting board, um, I also place right here because whenever you're doing food prep, you can just take the waste, move it off there. Uh, we have a 50 gallon water um, supply and then that 50 gallon water supply goes to a 10 gallon gray water. We then get into the toilet area and so here at the toilet area um, basically what you have is a composting toilet and at this composting toilet um, it separates your solids and your liquids and then right over here um, this is where we just have added storage. Now this has the ability to put in uh, shelves. I just didn't put any shelves in um, because I wasn't sure what other people needed. For us, we needed more of a vertical storage. Uh, is basically just another storage area. And we use this storage area primarily uh, as like the number one go-to storage area. And so this storage area is um, just great for just as like a catch-all. All of the lights are controllable with these light switches. And so this light switch right here 
controls these four lights. And then this light switch here controls these three. And then we have this light switch right over here, which controls these four that are in the bed. So there's a lot of opportunity for this to be extremely bright, and we prefer things to be really bright. Now, if you don't want it to be bright, then you can dim everything. So you can dim uh, the lights in the rear, you can dim these lights right here, and then also in the cooking area, you can dim those lights right there. It's a queen size mattress. The walls, the floor, the ceilings, everything is um, covered in foam. So it's all spray foam insulated. So there's several inches of spray foam on the floor, ceiling, and walls. So this is a true four season. Uh, to do this, I'm just gonna turn this to the side and I can either lift it out all the way or not. And then I just move this just like this. And then what I like to do is just fold it in half and then slide it back to the garage. If let's say the garage is full, um, then you would just tilt it upright just like this. So let's just for that sake of conversation, we'll just move that right there for the moment. Uh, you can put it up front, you can put it on the bed, you can put it just about anywhere. We then grab this, lift it up, and now we have our Dometic refrigerator freezer, uh, or freezer refrigerator, or freezer freezer, or fridge or fridge. Then underneath here, um, this is where we normally put our dry storage. Then each one of these drawers, we're like, well, we want to be able to, like for instance, like let's take this big drawer. I wanna be able to take this drawer out and I want to be able to grab whatever's all the way in the back. And all of the stuff on these rails, we actually have set a hammock between these rails. You can have another person in a hammock if you really wanted to. Um, the rails are, basically what you have is you can have it set up that you want it to fill up this bladder uh, or you want to drain the bladder. What this is, is the whole uh, control panel, but I prefer to use the app uh, rather than this. And so this is just kind of there because pushes it over here. Now, one of the things you'll notice is there's a check valve. And so this comes into our air compressor. So what we actually have is the ability to run the air compressor and then to blow out all of the lines. So that way we're winterized. Then we have our 30 amp um, uh, power inverter right here. So this is going to take solar, um, the engine and then shore power. And it just kind of juggles and decides where it wants to have its power coming from. This right here, if I want to charge the battery, I just flip this and then now I'm charging the car battery to jumpstart myself. If I want to turn off the entire array, then I just flip this one right here and now I don't have any solar power coming in. I don't have any power going anywhere. It is now dead and safe to be worked on here. But that battery is a 400 amp hour battery. I think it was like $5,500 just for the battery. It also turns on a light inside of here and this light in here allows me to see my water level so this is completely full right here and then as the water comes down then this is no water whatsoever this right here is actually um, the cell phone booster so the cell phone booster is right down there again the important thing to me was that the handlebars um, if i were to move this over there's enough space for the handlebar and then if we take a look um, i can have one two three four bikes ready to rock and roll. So again, if you wanna also run the water while you have the cutting board, I made it just the right size that you can totally do that. So the next thing that you'll see is that over here, we have our cooktop. Now this is not an induction cooktop, this is just a standard cooktop. And the reason we went with standard is because we wanna make sure it'll work with any pot and pan, and we wanted to make sure if you wanna toast your bread, you can. So you just touch right here, and then that light comes on, and then you can say on or off, and then we're just going to go ahead and turn this all the way up. And then same thing with this one. And we are going to go ahead and just turn this all the way up. And the camera should now be able to see that this one is red and hot. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. This one here is red and hot. I'm gonna turn that off. And then you can see that it says that both are hot. And so I'm gonna turn off the power and then I'm going to lock it by holding my finger here for just a few seconds. And now you can see that it's locked. These indicators will turn off once this is no longer hot to the touch. What I really like is that this fan, I put this right here so that way as you're cooking, it can exhaust out all of these um, fumes from cooking. So um, bring the table over for prep work so that way you can do all your prep work. Um, you can even bring it over and in to right here. So again, if you are doing prep work, then you can have your cutting board here, all your veggies and other things like that right here. And so then that gives you the ability um, to work just about everything. And again, if you were the one working this area, um, this right here becomes a pretty good um, kitchen space. Okay, from the time that I turned on the heater to right now, it's been about three minutes. It's gone through its initial self-check, uh, done the whole ignition phase, and we're now pumping out over 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, it's still not 100% warmed up just yet. So like I said, this is the largest heater um, that Wabasto, Wabasto has. It is um, 
the Evo 55, I believe, is what this is, an overview to make sure that you are comfortable if you are going to purchase this van, that you feel comfortable with the systems, the way that it was constructed, the way that it is. I'm gonna be the first to admit, I am not an interior decorator at all. This is perfectly good for me and my wife, but I know that some people um, have this idea of they want their van to look a certain way. And that's great if your van looks a certain way, but the thing is you need your van to act a certain way, to be a certain way. And if your van can't fit your stuff, if your van can't keep you warm, if the van can't operate in cold temperatures, what's the point? So to me, right now, this is a blank slate and anybody can make it look the way that anybody wants it to. So hopefully this van can take you on some really amazing adventures. I know my wife and I have had an amazing time in this van. And so I just really hope that this van is gonna be able to be something that gives you amazing times. And so fingers crossed, you like the van and I really know it's gonna give you a lot of really great adventures in the future.